Welcome to Doing Life Deliberately. My name is Trisha. And I'm Joe. And along with our four kids and a poodle, we live in this travel trailer full time. Now this trailer behind us is a Highland Ridge Open Range 310 BHS. It is 37 feet long. It is a quad slide trailer with four beds in the quad bunkhouse. In today's video, we'll show you why we've chosen the Highland Ridge Open Range 310 BHS for our family, but we'll also show you how we've made it a comfortable, functional space for our family that will house us all year long. And this is a four season trailer. And so from hot summers to cold winters, uh, this hopefully should be able to take care of our family. Come on in, I'll show you around inside. One of the main reasons that we bought this particular travel trailer was because of the quad bunkhouse. So come on in and take a peek. This quad bunkhouse has one slide that creates a very spacious area for the kids to call their own room. This bed, which is nice and big as you can see, will turn into a table and two bench seats. With the dinette set, this top bunk can lift up and it'll elevate here so you have enough headroom to use. Each of the girls on this side has a space underneath each of the benches to put their clothes and it goes all the way back to the wall so there's tons of storage space. We put their clothes in labeled containers in here so that it's easier for them to get to. They've got two windows that can open up and two windows below, one of which is an emergency exit. On this side, one of the nice features is there is a cubby hole up above for storage. So right up here where oldest can keep her belongings. Again, we've got the push button LED lights and we have shelf storage for each of the kids. So each of them, all four of them have their own shelf where they can put books and games and personal belongings. We have two drawers underneath where the kids can put their clothes. And there's a great little closet space that can hold quite a bit of clothes. And we even put some more personal belongings and clothes down here. The kid, girls have their ukuleles in there and Hannah has her backpack. And then Gideon utilizes this bottom space for more clothes and Legos and toys. And we put command hooks up on the wall for them to put their empty backpacks to get them up and off the floor and out of the way. To help the kids organize their shoes and hats and goggles and sunglasses, we put this over the door shoe organizer up there. One of the features that we really love about this particular model are the opposing slides. They push all the way out to create this big, spacious, open kitchen galley area for us to eat, to cook, to watch movies, and play games as a family. We were expecting, like most models, to have a bench seat dinette and to have love seat recliners, but when we found this model and we saw the U-shaped couch with the tables, we were so delighted that we would all be able to sit together as a family, watch movies, have meals, and not have to exclude anyone or put anyone in an awkward position during those times. So this was a huge blessing and a huge perk for us. These tables are great because they pop right up. These pedestals wind right off. And then there's a handy dandy drawer for them to slip right in. One of the main challenges of utilizing the storage space in the trailer is not that we don't have enough storage space, but it's using it efficiently. And I found these containers up above to keep each of the kids' school books and supplies. Another thing that we absolutely love about this model is the island. 
We have this big open space with Corian counters and an extra cutting board if and draining rack if needed. But these pop right off to give you a double deep sink. The faucet comes out with the sprayer, which is super nice. And it's nice to just have a little bit extra um, counter space. The island has an incredible amount of storage space. We've got four drawers here, and I keep plates and bowls and cups, silverware, washcloths. Um, I also keep all of our cleaning supplies down here. So it's not incredibly deep, which is something I wish that we'd maybe had a little bit more of is deep or tall storage space, but this gets the job done as far as keeping all of our cleaning supplies in it. And then garbage goes down here and I've managed to put our electric skillet and a couple other items down there. The stainless steel appliances are the nicest I've ever owned. We have just a regular microwave oven up here with a fan and a light. And then we have the stove top, which is propane and propane oven. It's a typical RV oven in that it's pretty small, so we haven't used it very much. It's also really nice to have a residential size fridge, and there's nothing special about it. It is uh, electric only, but it will run off the battery when we're driving, and it, that's how it keeps things cold. We have some really great cabinet space up here. I keep a lot of our dry baking goods, rice, pasta, that sort of thing up here. All of our coffee is up here, but it goes pretty deep, so that's been really, really nice. I keep some spices in our Instant Pot up here, and again, we've got more uh, drawer space and cabinet space down below. Another thing that I really appreciate is that we have lots of pantry space, and though it's not terribly deep, we are able to get quite a bit in there. I've got the four cabinets, and then I use this drawer below for bread. Again, one of the challenges is using the storage space that we have efficiently. And I've played around with this quite a bit over the past couple months. But by using smaller containers with lids on them, I can stack things up higher. And then I even have some front space for, say, like macaroni and cheese. Another thing that I have really loved is these two baskets that I purchased and you can even label them if you want but I'm trying to keep fruits and vegetables down here and snack items up here and it's just easy in and easy out but it holds things when we're moving so that's been really helpful when you walk in the door the command center is right in the entrance and we've got all of our outdoor lights we've got our awning controls we've got our exhaust fan for the kitchen We've got all of our slide controls are here. And then directly above that, we have a closet. This is probably one of my least favorite features because it's not very practical. It's really tall and I'm five foot two, so there's no way I'm reaching those hooks up there. But we've found that if we use a couple of these containers, we can at least utilize the space somewhat. And I keep the remotes right in here in a little basket as well. But all of the dog supplies are here. We've got electrical cords in here. Um, I keep the tripod up here and a couple fly sweaters so we can at least still utilize the space. The electrical panel for the rig is right here in the door underneath the command center. And you just pop it right open like that. The circuit breakers are right here on the top and the fuses are right here to the right. We've really enjoyed our TV. It comes with a DVD and CD player, also an AM FM radio, and there's two different zones so we can play music inside, outside, or both at the same time. Our marker board we keep behind the master bedroom door and this we use for helping the kids know their responsibilities, things that they need to do on a daily basis. Also you can see I've done some meal planning out there. We've also put the weather down here or what um, state park or campground we're staying at so the kids know where we are in case of an emergency. We also have our RV arrival and departure checklists that we can all consult for our different duties that Joe created for us. And we've just got some extra markers and such hanging over here. 
As far as RVs go, we have a pretty good sized bathroom and it's worked quite well for the six of us. I found that if we each have our own colored towel, it's easier to keep track of whose is whose and I do less laundry. So we've used our color coding system that the kids have had since they were teeny tiny so that they each have their own towel and I put up command hooks so that everyone has their own hook. And I can't complain about the sink. We have a good size sink. You can get your face there and it's far enough out from the wall that you can actually get down here to use the faucet to wash your face or hands. You don't feel like you're hitting the wall and it's in the way. And we have a pretty significant storage space in the bathroom. It's slightly awkward because the shelves are triangular. We have a good sized shower. Plenty of room for me. Again, I'm 5'2", so clearly there's plenty of space, but there's a nice skylight up above. Another thing that we love about this rig is that the kids have their own closed door bunkhouse and we have our own closed door master bedroom. And though we weren't looking for it, once we saw the slide that holds our closet, we knew that this was the rig for us. This slide comes all the way to the bed when it's pulled in. So we've got this much space. And I have several drawers to keep my items, a couple of shelves here, and then all this space for both Joe and I's clothes. It's also really nice to have these mirrors here that just help the room feel a little bit bigger than it actually is. We have great storage space up above. This is Joe's side. And we keep books and files and that kind of thing up there. We've also got more shelf space in here. And Joe has a drawer down here. I have my own cabinets up above over here. We have dual air conditioners. So there's a control in the master bedroom and a control in the main living space that you can see on the wall over there. Now let's head outside and Joe will explain some of the rig's outdoor functional features. All right, so I'm in the back of the rig now. This is the ladder that goes up to the top. Uh, Trisha uh, goes up here every time we have to pull in the slides and she takes a broom and sweeps off the top of the slides. Uh, so that's the ladder. Now here we have a six bike bike rack. It's from, it's uh, called a totem pole. It's one of the only six bike bike racks we've been able to find. And so we like this. Moving along, we have here, This is where the water connection is. Now you notice it's, it's recessed in with a door and that's to keep these connections uh, warmer during cold weather. So even if it's freezing outside, we can still have water running inside. And so there is a, a, a city water connection, um, a connection for when we fill it up uh, with water and then we're gonna be uh, off grid a little bit. Uh, there's a, a black uh, a water input where we can flush the black tank and then there's an outside shower and so we can use this to uh, rinse off feet when we're uh, dirty or anything like that. I like to keep our filter in here. This filters the water with a water pressure regulator so if we're in a place with high pressure water it doesn't ruin the rig. Alright I want to show you our outside kitchen. It's behind this big door. So we pop this open and in here is our outside kitchen. It comes complete with a pull out three burner propane stove. It connects to the propane tanks. We have a little drawer for supplies right here. Now we used to have a refrigerator right here, but we got rid of that uh, to decrease the weight. And so we really use this space for storage. There's a sink right here. We keep our uh, air compressor right there. And a little cubby here for the black gloves every time we need to touch the black tank stuff. And then a lot of storage up here. So we have a lot of these little containers that, what is this, Sterilite. A lot of little containers packed in here. Keep a lot of uh, storage items up here. Now we could also mount an outdoor LCD TV right here. It's wired for that, but we've chosen to really just have the one TV uh, inside.
I'm standing outside slide number four. So this would be the kitchen that slides out. And right here, this little door, it flips open to access the refrigerator. So the refrigerator inside is right there. Uh, you would need to access this to clean out the back end of it or uh, to winterize it. If we were gonna put it in storage over winter and we needed to get antifreeze into the ice maker lines, we would open this and do all that work right here. This is the front and main and only uh, entry door to the rig. You pull up this handle here, it comes out, and then the stairs come out uh, just like this. Uh, this rig is higher off the ground than a lot of rigs that we were looking at, and so it does have three steps instead of two. It takes a little bit more to get in there, a little bit more robust stairs. I'm standing right next to our outdoor grill. Uh, this whole unit sets up connected to uh, the rig. We can just lift it off and put it in storage to put it away. It is connected directly to the propane line. It's a gas grill, it's a flame king. And I've gotta tell you, I don't really like this grill. It's very difficult to operate. There's a, a really hot spot in one area and everything else is slower to cook. Uh, if you have suggestions for us of a better grill, um, maybe it attaches to propane, maybe it's a charcoal grill. I don't know, I'd like to replace this someday. Not a high priority, but please give us your suggestions. And then right here is the hot water heater. So we can open up this panel and if we need to repair um, or drain or uh, replace the outdoor heater or the, the water heater, we do that right here. Now, I was expecting that we would have to immediately replace the uh, hot water heater thinking that it would not provide sufficient hot water for a family of six, but I've been pleasantly surprised there's enough hot water in here uh, because it operates on gas and electric. Um, that it, it, it regenerates uh, enough water. So I've been very pleased with the hot water heater. We're now getting to the front of the rig and you see here there's a connection for solar panels. We do not have those, but if or when we get solar panels, we connect it right up to there and it will charge the battery. And here is the right side of the pass through compartment. So this goes all the way through to the other side. And here we used to store our tools, but that got to be uh, too heavy uh, on the tongue. And so we had to put those in the back. And now we put more bulkier, lighter items uh, up here. This is the very front of the RV rig. We have our tongue, our power tongue jack. This is beautiful. It makes the whole rig go up or down when you're putting uh, the hitch on and off. This connects to an equalizer three anti-sway and weight distribution hitch. Behind this we have two uh, propane tanks. Now these propane tanks are what 30 pounds each so we use one when that gets empty then we use the other which gives us time to fill this up and then behind that we have our battery and so we can run for a little bit of time uh, off the battery if we're not connected to power. There's also some nice lights up here if we are trying to hitch everything up in the dark we flip those on and we can do uh, we can see what we're doing hitching it up. All right this is the other side of the front of the rig we have here our pass-through door. It uh, opens up and there's a magnet that holds it so it doesn't flop down and hit you on the head. And then below this, this is the light switch to turn on the front lights over the hitch. I am underneath number one slide. So above me is the master bedroom closet slide. And so right below this, we have uh, our stabilizer jack. So there's four stabilizer jacks, and this rig is a little bit wider than most rigs, and so it has a tendency, because of the width and the weight, to rock back and forth. And so the stabilizer legs actually have a stabilizer lock arm to the stabilizer. So there's actually two connection points uh, to the frame uh, on each of the corners. So just past this, we have the areas where we can clean out the gray tank and the black tank. You just pull those levers and it opens up and it comes out that drain right there. So I already mentioned slide number four, which is on the other side, that's the kitchen slide. And I mentioned slide number one, which is the master bedroom closet slide up front. But here we have slide number two and slide number three. Now slide number two is where the big uh, U-shaped couch, dinette, and and galley is, so, so that all slides out and slides in here. And then this is slide number three, this is the bunkhouse slide. So Izzy's bed is right here, Sarah's bed is right there, and these slide out and slide in. Now all these windows also open up, they are tinted, so that keeps the sun out a little bit, keeps us cooler, but it, when it's nice and not humid out, we like to open those and get a breeze going through. This is the very back of the rig, and this is where the power cable connects. We have a 50 amp, unit 
that's a lot of power and so we need a lot of juice coming in and that goes right here now if we're in a park that has 30 amp or 20 amp we also have adapters that can take us down to that but this is the big cable that brings us all the juice Thank you so much for joining us for our tour of our Highland Ridge Open Range 310 BHS. We sure enjoyed having you come along and see our new home. And if you have any questions about any of the organizational tools that we use to make our home a little more functional, I will put links to each of those items in the description box below. I will also include a link to our website, www.doinglifedeliberately.com, where I will post a blog post that has a picture and affiliate link for each of the products that we mentioned today. Thanks again for joining us. We hope to see you around soon.